How's it going everyone? My name is Luke from Bisect Hosting and welcome back to another Bisect Hosting server tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'll be covering the basics to the budget Bisect Hosting control panel for your Java server. I won't be covering every aspect of the control panel today, but you can view our complete list of all of the videos that have to do with basically every bit of the control panel on our complete knowledge base at bisecthosting.com kb, or feel free to browse through our videos on YouTube. If you're interested in joining the Bisect Hosting community, feel free to join our community Discord server. We post updates, events, and then also updates to your server and Bisect Hosting in general. If you're interested, there's a link in the description below. All right, so let's go ahead and hop right into the tutorial. The first thing you'll need to do, of course, is to log into your control panel. To do that, you can visit budget.bisecthosting.com. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below. And then just log in with the username and password that was sent to your email. Just a quick note, the username and password is not the same as your billing panel username and password you use to purchase the server. Feel free to change the password once you've logged into the control panel by going to your profile here in the top right and then just simply putting in the current password and then the new and confirm password. All right, so let's go ahead and head back over to the dashboard, the first place you'll be brought to when you log into your control panel. And you'll notice a few different options. You can see all of your servers in the top left hand side. You can see all of the online players that you have on all of the servers that are under your account, the total amount of unique players. You can see the latest updates to control panels and bisect related things. You can even access the knowledge base right through the control panel here. And you can search for, let's say I want to know how to opt myself. I just search how to opt. And then here, there we go, how to opt yourself, and I can click on it to view the tutorial. We have some additional little tabs here. You can see all of the video tutorials, like the control panel, the file manager overview, and etc. And then all of our Discord, Twitter, Facebook, and socials on the left-hand side. All right, so let's go ahead and actually access the server. To do that, you can just simply select the My Servers button in the top left-hand side, and you'll be brought to the home page of that server. So at the moment, uh, you'll see some different options. It might look confusing, but don't worry, it's actually really easy to use. The first thing is just the start, stop, and restart. You can easily start, stop, and restart your server, and then this little icon here indicates the status of your server. You can see what's currently installed. Right now I have Spigot for 1.16.4 currently installed. Um, we have a mod pack menu which allows you to change your jar easily. Now with the budget server, you're only limited to these options at the top, but if you get the advanced support add-on, you can add different things like mod packs, cauldron, some Twitch mod packs, and etc. For more information on how to use a mod pack menu and instance manager, you can easily check out one of our videos by searching on the knowledge base. So we have the instance manager, which is similar to the mod pack, but you can create different instances to load and save from. We have our Discord again if you're interested in joining. You can name the server if you have multiple servers and you want to keep yourself organized. This is a great way to do that. Um, we have the amount of player slots that are allowed on your server, the current status, so currently it is online, and then it also shows the amount of players that are on. It shows your direct IP, including the port after the end, the RAM, and the ability to upgrade your package. What current world is loaded, so if I want to switch between worlds, I can easily do so. And then of course you can create your own subdomain and also change the subdomain add-on here on the right hand side. So once you're done with making those changes, if you did make any changes, just make sure you click the save button here at the bottom. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is our file manager. The file manager is a great way to see all of the files on your server without having to use an FTP client. You can easily access like your, your jar files, your configs for plugins and etc. To select different files, you can just click the next or the little box next to it. Or if you want to select all of them, you can just select the all button. And then you have a bunch of different options at the top. You can click on more to zip on archive. You can download, you can check the disk usage. You can also move different files, rename them and even create new files and folders. To upload a file, you can easily click upload. And let's say you uploaded from an external FTP client, you can easily refresh to see all the new files that were uploaded. Okay, great, so let's go ahead and move on. We also have console here on the left-hand side. This is an update of what's going on on your server, if it's stopped, saved, restarted, plugins that are loading, and etc. But then again, you also have the start, stop, and restart buttons here at the bottom. And you can also execute commands straight from the control panel itself. So that's great. We also have a chat, which is similar to console, but you can chat with players and change your username. Again, this shows you some information like the status of your server in the top left-hand side. Um, players is a great way to see all the players and search for players. 
Um, you have a plugins list, your local plugins list. You can see all the config files. And one of my favorite features is the server properties. Server properties is just like editing the server.properties in your file manager, but instead it's a nice little GUI that can easily be able to like enable and disable. So maybe I want to change the difficulty from easy to hard. I can easily switch easy to hard and then scroll all the way down and select save and then restart my server to apply those changes. On the left hand side, you can also use our backup manager. You can add custom commands. So if you want to have like a custom uh, restart warning and custom restart, those are available as well. You can schedule those commands and tasks to execute at a certain time of day within intervals. Um, we have users. Now users is like really, really helpful if you want to have admins or moderators on your server that have access to the control panel without having to give them your login. You can easily create a user and then uh, grant them a certain level of access. Uh, you can check our full knowledge base if you want to see the full tutorial on that for more details. So we also have startup parameters. If you know what you're doing with these, we also have that available. You can easily check these or use um, the recommended JVM flags. Um, and then last but not least is the MySQL database. For every server, you do get a free database that's attached. You can easily create a database by clicking the create database here in the top left hand side and then it'll provide you with all the information like your host, your database, your username, and password to log in. Again, we have another tutorial if you want to see all the details on that. Just simply search it in the knowledge base for more information. Another thing to note that's really important is I'm going to head back over into the home page here, but you can easily switch from light mode to dark mode by selecting the option here in the top right hand side. It will reload your page into the dark mode and then you can easily set it back if you wish. We also have custom tutorials that are page specific, so maybe you want to learn more about the home page. Currently I load the home page and I'm just going to click tutorials in the top left hand side and then here are all the tutorials that are related to the home page, but let's say maybe I want to switch to MySQL database and then I click tutorials. Now it's going to give me some tutorials on how to use the MySQL database. That's going to wrap up today's tutorial. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to contact us on our support tickets, or you can again view the full knowledge base at bisecthosting.com slash KB. If you enjoyed today's video and would like to see more, consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing and comment down below what you'd like us to cover next. Thanks for watching.